Hi there, it's Sandy, and I am back with part two of last week's video. And I had drawn the sunflowers and everything this week, and I saved a few of these last ones to finish up for you, because I told you I'd teach you how to draw a dead flower. Not that anyone needs to know, but a dead flower is visually indicated by something that's hanging downward, so the stem bending downward. Not all flowers do that, I know. Some will die straight up, but in this particular case, I thought bending downward would be helpful. The seed pod itself is the only thing left. The leaves have fallen off the flower, and only the greens that normally grow under the flower are left. And normally you'll have a few of those kinds of leaves that hang down, and then the rest are facing upward when the flower is alive, holding up those petals. I don't know if that's their job, but I'm picturing them that way. So when the seed pot is turned upside down, those are reversed. And so there's going to be some greens that will hang downward that used to hold up those petals. So I'm drawing some in front on top of the brown and some behind. The whole thing is going to get really mushy though, even if I'm drawing it clearly now, because I'm going to use Gamsol on it and a cotton ball for blending. Gamsol is a blending solution. I don't know what's in it. I don't really care all that much. It just works with colored pencils. And I have some in a container. And in the container, I put some cotton balls so that I can touch cotton ball to cotton ball and absorb only the amount of liquid that I want. Whereas if I touched it to the top of the bottle, I would end up pouring maybe too much onto it. So this gives me more control and then I won't spill it on my desk either. So this is the finished pair of pages. I've added a lot more layers to it. And what I pictured in telling my story through this is that this is my past and this is where I met Christ and this is what my life is like since him. There's a lot more fuzziness and murkiness on this side. The skies are gray. There's a lot more tangled weeds and dead things and just indistinct edges. There's just a lot of fuzziness. My early life was characterized by some joy. I had plenty of happiness in my life. So there's still beautiful color. There's still flowers. However, there's a lot of bad stuff too. We all have those kinds of things in our lives. And I'm not going to get into all of that here, but in terms of telling my story, I could use one of those instances to illustrate the point that I'm making to you now about the fact that as Christians, we still have some things in our life that don't go great. And they're not, they're not wonderful things. I had a number of those that were all mixed up together. I couldn't tell the difference sometimes between good and bad because there were things that looked like they should be good and they weren't and things that looked like they should be bad and they seemed to turn around. And I didn't really know Ed edges of everything were murky. So that is one of the reasons for all of the fuzzy edges that I've created. But there was a moment when clarity started to appear. When I was in my early 20s, I had walked away from the Lord and I had a moment when I needed him. And I didn't really know even how much I needed him and I didn't know why I needed him, but I ended up in a church. And long story to that, but in that church, I was positive. I, the whole building was going to fall on my head. I was absolutely convinced of it. And I hadn't been in a church for that reason. I didn't want to bring any buildings down. And instead, the Lord met me there. And I can't explain it, but it was the tiny moment of clarity that began. Just a little tiny bit, that little leaf, was all God needed to start working his way back into my life and prying my heart back open. And ever since then, things have grown. Things have blossomed. Changes have happened over my life. I now have clarity that I didn't have before. I have visual difference that I can tell now between light and dark. I can tell the difference between my godly behavior and that for which I must repent. I can tell the difference now. I've studied the Bible. I know those things. And it's not that my Christian history didn't teach me that. It's that I've now internalized it so much more as an adult who has received Christ on her own. I know what I should be doing and how God wants me to react in different situations. And I know when I have not done so. 
I also can recognize when things around me are unjust. Whereas before everything looked murky, everything was not clear to me. And it has really changed my vision. It was like I lived my life for so long without glasses. And then I went to the eye doctor and I could see again. And my entire life story could be told in small vignettes in, you know, three sentences to someone who I'm ministering to. If someone comes to me that has a particular issue that they can't solve in their life, whether or not it's an issue of being mad at God or something faith related, or they just got fired from their job and they're heartbroken and they don't know what to do, or they've lost a relationship or who knows what it could be. I have so many instances in my life where I can tell my story to them about how I felt at the time. And I think that's the piece where we miss out a lot as Christians. We jump to, oh, Jesus will make it better. And when a person is lost in the sorrow of their problems at the moment, just hearing everybody else has got sunshine, all you have to do is say yes, does not really seem all that appealing to some people. It didn't to me. When I was lost in this, I had a number of people who tried to pull me back and all they did was read me Bible verses. And yeah, sure, I read those Bible verses as a kid, but they meant nothing to me. And we know that to those who are not in Christ, the, the word of God is foolishness. And it was foolishness to me at that time. I went through that long, dark period and it didn't work for me. And I want to be the kind of Christian who would have been there for me someone who would have listened, someone who would have asked me questions about how I felt and drawn out of me more information about what's going on at the core of the issue, what's underneath of it all, because that's what I needed someone to speak to. I needed someone to tell me they understood where I was, that they'd been there before, and they found a pathway out of it and have them help walk me to the solution. And that's not the kind of people that I've found either at the time or even in the church right now. And maybe it's because when you're in the church and you're talking to someone within the church, you can say, scripture verse X says this, go stand on it. And that person may grasp that because the word of God is not foolishness to them. But when we're talking to people who are not believers, it's so important for them to feel heard and understood. And then find the solution as opposed to throwing the solution at them and making them feel like they're, they're just not capable of understanding it. And that can often make it feel worse. It made me feel worse. It made me feel like I was a terrible person for not being able to just pray and make it go away. <laughs> and I want to be the kind of person who helps folks in that situation. That's my goal. And that's what I hope that this illustration will help me to do. Even if I don't pull out this Bible and this picture, it truly helped me to find some language that I can use about how life felt when I was without Christ. Because I can, I can really say it felt like I had no glasses on. Because I know what it lo it's like to have no glasses on. I have terrible eyesight. And Thinking about life in those terms makes perfect sense to me that now I can see I've been to the eye doctor. Let me know in the comments if you have found some type of illustration of your before and your after. What was life like for you before and what is it like now? And how did you navigate that? Is there a way that you can tell someone that story in, say, three sentences? So that when they have a need and you want to share Jesus with them, you can do so without monopolizing the conversation. I have been yammering at you for a long time here, and I want to learn how to shorten that story. That's what I'm going to be working on next. I want to bring it down to some basics and be able to share that. But at least I've now got the framework for that vision, and I'm excited about at least making this much progress. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.